and as he grew, he'd say, I'm gonna be like you, Dad. You know I'm gonna be like you. And the cats in the cradle. What's going on, guys? It's a boss man here, and we are at the Boss Man Prophecies podcast. And uh extremely special guest here, John Asher. Uh he's been known around Springfield. He's definitely known in Lakemore. Uh, I, you know, we've known each other a long time. We grew up in Lakemore together and, uh, yeah, you have a, you have a pretty unique story. Um, yeah, you've been known, uh, around the country, probably in the biker world. Uh, you know, son, you're sitting next to uh kind of a, a Springfield legend here, I would say. I wouldn't say a legend, yeah. but Springfield legend. Listen, definitely with the hair like this, man. I, I love it. I love the hair. Nice short haircut. I, I, <laughs> I love the pigtail. You know, I wish I could grow that. Hey, the pigtail. It's a ponytail. 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 All right. No, but you got the goatee going. I don't got anything going. So. That's right, because you're 15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think about this uh, event I'm going to pull off here? I mean, I'd like to come out here on May 25th. And maybe maybe even the twenty fourth. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, because it's going to be a good weekend. That's Memorial Day weekend. Right. We're going to try to bring some hope back into to the area. If you have a, like broken families, you have uh, you know people that are fighting addictions, people are fighting uh, you know depression, anything you know anything that's going on. People are sick. Even if you're sick, come on out. We're going to pray for you. We're going to have some uh, testimonial. Uh, yeah, a lot of people with yeah. the different stories. We're going to have a stage set up. Yeah, they're going to uh, have a stage. We're going to have people doing testimonies from the Springfield area. Yeah. I've got like Brandon Archer's going to be here, and he and he's got a big, strong, strong testimony. And then I'm going to, and I got my son JJ. He's going to hopefully he's going to yeah. come out. And make yeah, it. we met uh we met Brandon the other day. Yes, he uh he will he will definitely light up the crowd out there. He is you could the passion just flows through him. I mean, it, it's it's flowing. Absolutely. Well, we must remember today is Good Friday. Yeah, yeah we're doing this on Good Friday. Yeah, yeah, so this is Good Friday. I got a couple verses I'd like to well, like on to Good read Friday, up. that is when Jesus was on the cross, right? He, Absolutely. He's crucified. Right. Yes, he's crucified and put in the tomb. So, right, John, let's, so let's, what we got, man? I, I, I got Good Friday. I said, Happy Good Friday. Praise the Lord, Jesus. <laughs> I would like to share some awesome verses I've had since I've brought the Lord back into my life. And one of them is John three sixteen. It's for God so loved the world. He gave his only son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish and have everlasting life, but have everlasting yeah, I, life. Absolutely. I, I, I do. Re, I, I remember that one, John. I, and that's a sec, exactly what's going on today. God's given his son for us, for you and I and you. So, uh, you know, this is just a, a great day. Right, it's a great day. It, it's a great day, to, and and guys out there, if he's moving, it, man, he's moving. He'll take it. He'll take it right from you. He's moving. All I can tell you, I got another one. Since I since I received the Lord, it, Galatians two twenty, it says, "I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God." who loved me and gave his life for me. Again, that's what he's doing right now today. Watch that's what we're celebrating today is Good Friday. So this is the day that he was crucified on the cross. John, when, I mean, just to get into it a little bit, when did you start, I mean, the transformation in you is like, you know, unbelievable. I We've been talking, you know, for years and, you know, just here, you know, it just, I just seen it. And I've seen like the, you have a different, aura about you a different you know power it seems like it's it's amazing just yeah tell us a little bit about like this change well i could tell you this the power is not from me it's from the holy spirit and i thank jesus for it every day he loved me enough to give me a chance to get, to, to make my life better and to make my life you know go to eternal life eternal life starts when you receive the lord when you acknowledge the Lord and acknowledge who he is and you receive him and accept him, you now have eternal life. And it flows through us, you know, and you get the power. He says, I give you the power to become sons of God, right? Yeah. So when you receive the Lord, you receive the power to become sons of God. So that's cool, man. And so, so what I'm doing, you know, I'm just, 
I, I'm not doing anything, to be honest with you. I, I'm picking up pieces that Jesus. I've messed up. You're like a vessel. Yeah, I'm an open vessel, but I'm picking up pieces that I've messed up my whole life. I mean, I've ran around, and I've done some crazy stuff, man. And I mean, just to keep it short and sweet, because I want to be giving my testimony on this day, and, and, and I'd love for everybody to come out and see it and listen to it and hear it, and maybe it'll touch someone. But anyhow, and it's not about my story. It's about the story of the cross. So I have repented I have been forgiven, and I have forgiven everybody that I've ever had an issue with. I have no problems with no one. All I want to do is serve the Lord, be happy, and be thankful that I'm able to. And that's what I want to do. So yeah, you're you're alive at this point. I mean, what <laughs> what's the odds of that? I mean, even for myself, I mean, life is short, man. Well, here I am, pressing thirty, twice, right, right. twice, <laughs> times so, two. Yeah, right. So. Anyhow, I don't know. I, uh, I just, I'm just very stoked about this event we got coming on, you know, that we're going to be bringing here. And uh, there's going to be some worship teams out here playing music and stuff. It's going to be really cool. Yeah, there's going to be some baptisms. Uh, well, uh, if people, yeah, I, I hope there's a lot of souls yeah. come to Christ that day. There, there's a lot of people around the area, you know, right, everywhere that need this. I mean, everybody has something going on in their life where they, you know, just open up. And- Everyone needs Jesus. I could tell you that. I could tell you this. When I was lost, man, I had everything I wanted. I had four motorcycles, five sometimes. I had, I had many things that brought me to this problem. You know, I never, I never realized that I was in, I was in the way of everything. I met a guy, his name is Blind George. He comes to our church, and he's blind. And uh, he had talked to me one day, and he goes, you know, John, I heard a lot of stories about you. He goes, but I don't see that in you right now. And I go, well, what do you mean you don't see that in me? He can't even see, but he could see better than we could see. I'm going to just say that. And that was like my brother Dave. He was blind, and he could see things that nobody else could see. But anyhow, I'm just going to be honest with you. He told me, he goes, all I could see you doing, John, you need to get away from yourself. Get, just get away from yourself. Get out of yourself's way and let the, let the Holy Spirit in. And I went home that night, and I was thinking about it. It scared me because at this time, I've done lost everything I ever loved. I mean, I loved doing what I was doing. I, I was content with everything. I was trying to serve the Lord, but it wasn't happening. I, I mean, at the time, you thought that, that all this stuff was normal. And yeah, everything was normal. You, this is what made you happy. Everything was normal when I was doing what I was doing other than, let me see that. Let me, let me back up. Everything was normal to me at that time because I didn't have Jesus in me. And I thought I did. I thought I did. But I was still continually doing the same old stuff. So there was no evidence and a change. So... I was like, wow, I could tell everybody I love Jesus and I'm doing all this and doing all that. Well, no, you can't. Well, anyhow, after I had that little meeting with George, I spoke with him and he told me that I went home man, and I was really searching my heart and I asked the Lord, I said, whatever this Holy Spirit is, I need it. I want it. And I was calling out to him and it, and it came. I mean, it came to me. And next thing you know, what I've, I'm, I'm in the word. He says, you know, I, I rededicated my life up at the church and stuff. And, 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 uh, I just, I've ever since I've been in the word, I, I got faith in everything that's going on with the Lord. And you, you know? just, you just felt it over taking your body. Oh, well, the be honest Spirit. with you. I felt, I, right. I didn't feel it. No, I didn't feel that. Some people get different. You know, I, what I felt was I asked for change and it happened that quick though. It happened. Some people get knocked off their socks. Some people do whatever they do. I have not done it. However, I tried to do that. I wanted to do that. I wanted everything I could get. But it's in God's timing. Like I said yesterday when we was talking, I said, you know, everything's in God's timing. And uh, so now, now what I could tell you is this for sure. I could tell you this for sure. I am a born-again Christian. I believe in the Lord. And I and I I've learned how to love again. I never knew how to love. I thought I did. I didn't know nothing about love. 
I really didn't. I mean, when you're running around doing the stuff that we do, that we that I was doing, how can you look at anybody and tell them you love them? It's a lot of selfishness. A lot yeah. of yeah, I I get that. But I mean, he loved me enough to forgive me for all of that and wipe my sins clean. And not only that, he gave me the ability to forgive myself, and that's a fact. And so. I ain't concerned about anything that was before this. You know what I mean? That's all washed away and everything become new, man. There's a new, there's a new, new guy in town and, and new I'm guy. praising and uh, serving the Lord. I mean, what, like some of the relationships you had in the past and, and like with the people you still associate with, I mean, it, it's definitely had to change your, some of your relationships. Well, Hey, we're going to interrupt the podcast real quick to tell you guys a little bit about our sponsors for this episode. Yep. First major sponsor, Bill Denholm. Yeah. Listen, Bill's been with us for a long time. and You've actually known Bill a long time. I've known Bill since I was little. He's got me like lizards and stuff. Yeah, before. I remember that. But Bill, listen, he has done so many uh, deals for us. He finds the deals. He helps me with the rehab of the deals. I mean, I'm telling you, Bill is a cheat code when it comes to real estate uh, realtors. That's it. Yeah, he's a realtor. He's our guy when it comes to buying and selling homes. All right, let's get to our next one. Mr. Uh, Steve Williams with Relentless Pest Control. Listen, if you need some bugs, Dad. Uh, listen, oh, how man. many times? Yeah, is- uh, you better put Steve on your speed dial because when you walk into that house and you know it's a good deal, the you're going to be calling them. The fleas are hopping on you. Yeah. You're going to want them dead. If, if you're not calling Steve, you're probably paying too much for that house. Yep. I'm just I, letting I you would, know. Yep. Because Steve, he is killing all these damn bugs, and your contractors are really going to appreciate you. Let's get to the next guy. That's uh, Rob the Mortgage Guy. Rob, the mortgage guy, if you need, let's say, I mean, if you're just living in the house, you need a free uh, refinance. Yeah. He's the guy. If you're looking for that loan for your fix and flip deal, he's the guy. I've known Rob for so many years, and Rob has so much experience in the mortgage business. Yeah, and he's got he's got a loan for everything. <laughs> he does. He, he is great for advice. I mean, he is extremely knowledgeable about mortgages. He is probably the guy that makes life easy, you know, to get a loan. Yeah. And uh, listen, if you are sick of hearing, uh, hey, when do we get a clear to close? When do we get a clear to close? Yeah, you call them up. You will get the clear to close. A lot of people that knew me before now and knew I was going to church and stuff. And I, and I was going to church. I've been going to church for like, I've been going to ABC about four years. Joe Brown, I don't know. Everybody out here probably knows Joe Brown as well. But uh, he was getting baptized, and he invited me to church. And so I went out there, you know, and I thought, well, I'll go with him, you know. But it, then he has me set up in the front row. And here, his pastor, he's, he's a biker. He rides a motorcycle and stuff. Uh, he's, I wouldn't say he's a biker. I just say yeah, he, he, I, I he, he likes to ride yeah. motorcycles. And, uh, and he's up there preaching his head off, man. I thought, man, this dude's crazy. You know, he was going to town. Yeah, yeah. I've heard him. Yeah, he, yeah. he know he knows how to he knows how to give it out there. But anyhow, he was crazy, and he and 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 I went back another time, and I and I was just watching him, and I thought I told Joe I probably never should have went there because I didn't I thought the whole church was crazy, but they are crazy, and they're crazy for the Lord. They are definitely crazy for the Lord. Them people. Yeah, they the, they get down. I, yeah. I was out there a couple Sundays with you. Yeah, she sure yeah. was. I put an invite out there. And, and they came out. So all I could say is this, it's, it's a much better life for me and a much better life for others. You know, I've seen a lot of people that's been, you know, received the Holy spirit and, and been good from that point on, like with Brandon, Brandon and his wife, they've got a big story. I'm not going to get into it because yeah, he's going to he be told me, he told me some of that story. I mean, that listen, guys, I, you guys got to come down just May 25th, just, you know, just to hear his story. I mean, that, that was pretty incredible. Uh, and I, I'm sure I just heard a fraction of it. Yeah, you did. So he's a big talker, but he's yeah. good. So, uh, this is called the night of hope. It's on May 25th. We're going to start it off about what? Six o'clock. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll six start. O'clock. Yeah, maybe a little bit earlier. You know, we'll we'll see how it goes. Well, we're going to be doing this what once a week, trying to let people know who's going to be out here. Yeah, who's going to be talking and uh, yeah, building up to the event. Yes, yes, we're gonna. Yeah, we're looking for some special guest speakers. You know that you know probably going to shock you. You know, we get these guys out here. And we're going to set up a cool stage. Uh, you know, we're gonna you know invite everybody. You know, everybody down here that uh. You know that needs that needs Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus, so everybody needs to come down and hear. What do you think? Oh, how about your friends at school and I'm your sorry. friends? Yeah, he's I, been kind of quiet. I can definitely, there. yeah, I could definitely get some of them out. I, I know for especially for younger people, that's in bigger need. I, I can tell you that for a fact. Why do you, Why do you think that? I mean, because the younger group, you know, you look at these churches now, and they're almost. You know they're they're folding up everywhere because the, I guess the younger well younger people yeah they don't go to church they don't they they're like oh that's something my parents may have forced me to do but it's just like they don't that they don't do that they they don't want to go to that and then like everyone like through media and stuff they see the opposite because the media pushes like they they don't push Jesus at all they media they actually push you away from that all the celebrities and stuff that come out openly religious. They get pushed away. They have issues that go on with them, but then you'll advertise people that are like that promote the devil and stuff. That's who they push. And that's what all young people like my generation and stuff, maybe even a little older, that's what they see. And then they look at churches. That's something I was forced to do. I'm not going to go to that. Cause it's, you know, uh, and then that's kind of like the issue with the, the biggest shit with the generation coming up now. I'm going to tell you something. This says in the Bible, it's, it's written that when he comes back, every knee is going to kneel and every mouth is going to confess. Every head's going to bow and every mouth is going to confess to him. So there's no way out of this. So when people think that they could come here and we could just do what we want in the world and everybody thinks everybody's going to heaven, well, unfortunately, there's another place and that's hell. So I'm not judging anyone because... I am not the judge, and, and I would never tell anybody they're going to hell. I could just tell you this. You better search your heart and ask the Lord to search your heart with you, and then you'll find out that we're doing, we're doing a lot of things wrong out there. Every, every day, you know, it's getting worse. It's getting worse out here. So It is. I mean, just I mean, look at the news. I mean, I can't even turn that on anymore. You know, all around the world, just, just constant. Well, it's just constant, just negativity, just, just negativity, bad stuff. just evil. Yeah. So I'll tell you something. Once I received the Lord, and, and there's days like yesterday when I was here, I was I was just tired. I was like my mind was just blocked out, and I was just like, man, what's going on? You know. So, so I went home, got some rest. It was I was just tired. I just been on a two week. Uh, mission. I've been out doing some. Yeah, things. you were down in Florida. Yeah, yeah, I was down in Florida, running around, riding around, and meeting up with people, going to some churches out there. So it was really, really cool, man. I went to this church called the the River Church up in Tampa, and that guy. You want to talk about the Holy Spirit moving in that church? It's moving, and uh, he he. It, yeah, that's it, a video. I, I believe you sent. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's a treat there, but. Uh, just to make it make it easy, you know, there's a, there's another verse I like to share with you. And it's Proverbs three, five, and six. It's trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understandings. Always acknowledge Him, and He'll direct our paths. And th then there's one more. It says, "Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil." And that's exactly what I had to do, because I tell you, you don't want to be caught here that day when He shows up. I mean, when he shows up to take his church with him, you don't want to, you be, want to left, be part of you it. You don't want to be left back. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just saying, uh, it's been good for me. Uh, like I said, May 25th, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to give my testimony up there and, and we're going to have some yeah. really big testimonies. It's going to be a night, it. night of, of hope here, uh, here at Kim Tam park at Melanie Springs. And, uh, I know uh, Melanie Spirit's going to be around here that night for sure. Um, it's going to be powerful. You know, we, uh, you know, I, you guys all come on down. It's it's going to be a great, great event, man. I'm looking forward to it. I know, uh, 
you've been talking to me for a while about it and uh, that you wanted to get this off and rolling. And, man, I'm glad that we finally took the steps to actually to get it going. Uh, we're going to have a poster coming out here real soon. We're going to create an event. And uh, we're going to start sharing it around. And I'd love to get as many people as possible interested in coming down and uh, a night of hope, you know, for humanity, really. It'll be a good night. It'll be a good night. What do you, what do you think, boy? I'm counting down the days. I mean, I think this will be a real interesting event because, I mean, we've done stuff like this here before in the past, but I've never really, like, been, hey, like I've never been involved. Yeah, with been it. involved. Uh, and the more and more you. I'm getting involved, I mean, I'm, I'm curious to see how much people like, how much people show up to this kind of event, because I, I mean, it's definitely an important event, but people don't like to show up to important things, is what I've seen. You know, they show up to the stuff. Oh, you have some fun here. Do this. This stuff is like the stuff people need to do, and then people just they don't do what they need to do. So I'm just like. I'm curious to see how much people show up, how the event, like how the event runs. Like I, the more I'm involved with stuff, the more I learn how stuff goes. Like this event is completely different than anything I, we do. Anything we do, this is completely different. I mean, it's, 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 I love having him, you know, on here. He's just so worldly as a 15 year old man. I love it. Well, here's the thing. He's going to get touched. Yeah. He keeps talking about this and keeps hearing about it. He's going to get touched. And uh, he could be the one that carries this on every year. You know, you could have this be part of a every year annual thing. You know what I mean? And uh, I don't know. I'm excited about it. Um, I'm excited about hearing these other testimonies that we got coming in and the music is going to be here. It's going to be a real, real good night. Yeah. And uh, all right, guys. So once again, I'm going to recap it. May 25th, Night of Hope. You know, with John Asher. Be down here. Yeah, be down. Um, he's the one that, you know, put this in my ear. John has put it in my ear for a while now. And uh, we're getting it off the ground. And we're going to start the season off with this. This is a perfect way to start this season. Because we want this season to go smooth. You know, do it the right way, man. This is it. This is a great way to start it. And I thank you, John, for uh, bringing this to me. And uh, bringing it to, you know, the community. And uh, it's going to be a good one. Hey, it's an honor. I thank you for allowing your property to be open for that night. Oh, man, it's so. always going to be open for that. And you have a bunch of other ideas, too, with uh, some church camps and everything that we're going to go into at a later date. But, yeah, it's going to be. Uh, you can have day camps, church camps. It's going to, it's, it's, hey, whatever the Lord leads us to do, I can't say no. You're the vessel. I love it. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. All right, guys. So we're going to be signing off here. We'll see you May 25th. See you. I'm going to have to get that see you part. Yeah, all right, come on. Let's see you. <laughs> yeah. You got to do a see. You got to do your best one. Do your best one. Yeah. Come on, let's see, see you. Yeah. See, see you. See you. See you.